So I think we are uh, well into a quorum. And uh, since our one hour is very short, we should probably get started. And uh, because Russ, I know, is uh, very busy and has to grade a lot of papers tonight, <laughs> um, let us... Uh, Dave, do you want to give any introduction to Russ, or we'll just let Russ give an introduction to Russ? Um, actually, let's see. Yeah, uh, I just want to say um, Russ is a neighbor of mine and a longtime friend, and um, we're glad to have him here tonight. He's a professor at the University of Maryland, and um, that's about all I'm going to say. I'll let Russ uh, take over. Thanks, Russ. You're muted, Russ. I promise I will be brief, but not quite that quiet. Um, I am an at atmospheric chemist at the University of Maryland, and one of our projects is measuring emissions of methane from uh, cities and landfills in Maryland. Uh, and we published a paper identifying uh, some of the larger sources. Uh, and landfills appear to be low-hanging fruit for controlling methane emissions, by which I mean some of them uh, emit substantial amounts of methane, but with relatively modest changes in the way they're managed. Um, they, uh, uh, the emissions of methane can be reduced uh, a lot. <clears throat> the, the difficulty is uh, we can, with uh, aircraft observations, get a snapshot of the methane coming out of any one landfill or maybe dozens of snapshots. <clears throat> and you begin to build a picture that way. Uh, but we would like to use a landfill or a couple of landfills in Maryland as a test bed to fully understand what it is that causes methane to escape from landfills. And that would involve a number of different measurement techniques. Um, and we have a substantial buy-in <clears throat> from the Millersville landfill in Anne Arundel County. Uh, but we would also like to visit the one on Brown Station Road here in Prince George's County. And we had set up uh, a meeting, a telecon with them, with the Brown Station operators and with our colleagues at uh, NOAA, the Weather Bureau, <clears throat> um, the Maryland Department of the Environment and NIST, which is the National Institute of Standards and Technology to uh, try to put together a plan to go visit and see where we could install towers or remote sensing devices or where we could drive around to try to quantify, uh, that is to measure the uh, the amount of methane coming out of there. But for whatever reason, <clears throat> that telecon fell through. Uh, so if you could encourage them to, uh, to set up another meeting where we could uh, explore the opportunity to, uh, at hopefully no expense to them other than uh, providing electricity for the instruments and security at night, uh, make some measurements. <clears throat> Russ, I, I, hate to, flux. I hate to interrupt here, but when you talked with us earlier, you said the, the meeting the telecon fell through is sort of vague. You said <laughs> Brown Station road guys didn't show up and all the rest of you were there. Uh, that is correct. Okay, because that's kind of important too. Kevin, do you have any idea what the position of the department is? So, um, Professor Dickerson, um, um, there was a conflict of schedule um, when you had the meeting. Um, and so um, we, we, we tried to identify a date for the next meeting. And there are two options that we're going to provide to the group which is January 17 or 18. Uh, and that's where RRD per personnel are available. Um, I'll send you an email for the dates and the time. Um, just, uh, you know, you group ha just have to choose the date and time. Uh, and that's going to be January 17 and 18. 
Um, <clears throat> okay, when did you send that email? I, I haven't. I'm going to send it to you uh, later. Okay. All right. You know, I understood that you were uh, there was some concern over MDE was going to do an inspection on the 7th. Um, but we got them to delay it to the 8th so we could meet on the 7th. Mm -hmm. And so, so what happened was um, Marlin and Tim had already committed to some uh, appointments so that's why they were not okay. able to, to attend but the january 17 and 18 um uh, uh we have decided on that uh, options uh, for the meeting okay Just to let me know. great mm -hmm. send that email around and we will uh yes we'll try to organize the uh the federal agencies and the uh, the state as well yes mm -hmm. Well, I hope that all of those agencies will be available on just those two days. Might be hard to organize, but it's wonderful if you can, and it's very nice of you to try. Because it's well, we'll give it a shot. Getting this monitoring would be so good. So, so everybody here on the SWAC knows that uh, we have had lots of discussions about this uh, Brown, and I guess this was before Nyla came and Bill came on, I'm sure Bill knows about this though, that we had had lots of discussions about this uh, Brown station earlier, which the Brown station operators and um, Lee Flick was very insistent. It's not a methane problem. And Russ, you can explain much better than I, the uh, a study which the state then verified said that that general area was a tremendous methane problem. Is that correct? Without Well, a, a, a couple things happened. Um, it, they'll take a step back and the 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 landfill is completely in uh, in compliance with the regulations that MDE sets up. So uh, let me say that right up front. And in order to estimate emissions of methane, they have a, a little model, which is really a spreadsheet, and they do surveys with a handheld methane monitor to identify leaks. Uh, there's a difference between finding where there are leaks and getting a flux, the total amount of methane coming out of a landfill. So in that sense, we may be talking about different things. If you fly a box around um, a major source, and you measure the winds going in and the methane going in and the winds going out and the methane going out, you can calculate the total amount emitted. So um, that's uh, that's one thing. And the, the, yeah, what we calculated was a substantial amount. Uh, MDE had reported <clears throat> the total amount based on their model. And they discovered, this was apparently not the landfill, but MDE uh, had made a mistake in that uh, Excel spreadsheet type model. They uh, multiplied by 0.1 instead of uh, 0.9 for how much uh, methane was consumed in the overstory. <clears throat> so their new estimates, the new MDE estimates of methane emissions from, uh, from landfills is uh, actually even a smidgen higher than what we got from the direct measurements from the aircraft. So. But it would be really nice if we could uh, do some detailed measurements with a variety of techniques. If you use three or four different state-of-the-art techniques you and they agree, then you have high confidence. You know what that emission is. You can develop a model based on weather and soil and how the uh, waste is treated. And uh, maybe from there, uh, move forward on better controls at all landfills. So it seems that if you're offering to help get this ironed out, if the state admits that there are problems, the county has said it's really worried about climate change and is now working very hard with the new climate initiative. It seems like such a wonderful convergence of possibilities at either figuring things out, if Lee is right, or assess it, documenting the problems and then using your knowledge and hopefully 
uh, getting low hanging fruit to correct a lot of the problems. Yeah, it would be great. Um, the there are a variety of federal agencies willing to support the uh, development of a test bed, including NIST, NOAA, and EPA. So, uh, so that would be great. And I, uh, you know, last conversation we had with uh, Andrea Crooms uh, seemed promising. So, great if we can do sometime in mid January, that'd be great. And if you have any other questions for me, I'm happy to answer them. If not, I'm going to finish grading final exams. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Thank you so much for doing this for the county. But let me look at uh, Kevin. Sorry, I didn't want to interrupt. Professor, Professor Dickerson, I have a question. So you indicated that one of the new member is coming from the GW, correct? George Washington University. Um, I don't think I said that, but one of my former students is a scientist at GW, and he would like to use satellites to monitor methane. Okay. So no, what I the the participants would be the University of Maryland, the Maryland Department of the Environment, NOAA Air Resources Lab, um, possibly some people from EPA and NIST. Uh, they're in Gaithersburg, National Institute of Standards and Technology. They're the principal sponsor. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. And I just want to emphasize that um, because this is one of Andrea's priority, uh, this uh, joint study, and that's why um, uh, we have that meeting um, um, uh, identified uh, so we can move on with this uh, study. Very good. Okay, hope this one works. Thank you. Terrific. Best of luck. Thank Don't you. Don't forget the 17th is the day after a federal holiday. So that may have an impact on people being available. Well, we'll do a doodle poll. How's that? Okay. I'm just say, I'm just throwing that out there as a reminder that it's a day after a holiday. And from my experience in dealing with the federal government, day after a holiday is not a good day to try and do anything. Because most people have made other plans for the holiday that extend. Okay. Other questions for me? All right. Thank you very much. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much, Ross. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Most appreciate it. Because, I mean, my, my personal feeling is anything the SWAC can do to try to encourage this collaboration between people who can monitor and hopefully figure out how to remediate um, methane emissions and our county, which may or may not be unwittingly releasing more methane than they had initially thought. Um, would be fantastic. So I'm very keen on this. Um, anybody else? Do, do uh, what are other SWAC people's feelings on this? Are, is everybody else as keen on this as I am, or do are people more reticent? Barbara. Yes, please. Yeah, I think the other good thing about this is um, I think Russ said that if uh, they come up with some good information and maybe some systems of monitoring, uh, this could be also applied elsewhere, maybe across the state or even uh, nationally. So I think this is really a good thing that they're participating in because there's probably nothing coming from a lot of other landfills across the country. So. Right. Absolutely. Okay, moving right on. And now that everybody is here, Alexandra wanted to tell us some sad or wonderful, depending which side of the aisle you're on news. Hi everyone. So I just wanted to let everyone know that um, this may be my last meeting or uh, with the SWAC. Uh, I've moved to uh, Washington DC and that's because I've recently uh, become engaged and planning uh, my wedding. Uh, so uh, me and the fiance had decided to move uh, to DC. 
but um, I, you know, I know Kevin said he would look into my possibility of staying on, but I did want to take the opportunity to address um, all the members uh, to to let you know this. And um, like I said uh, earlier, um, you know, I I call Prince George's County my home. I, I've, I've been here since I was, you know, ten years old, um, and you know, have an interest in seeing you know, this, the county really thrives. So this was a great opportunity. And, you know, I hope to continue to serve, um, you know, in whatever capacity that, that that allows me to, to do so. But yeah, that, that was my update. And we thank you so much. We wish you, wish you a wonderful life. I hope that they could work it out that you could stay on, but if not, uh, thank you so much. Barbara, unless I'm mistaken, you have to be a county resident. Yes. No, I, 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 that's, I, I, that's the that's the dilemma. Right. So th that's the only question. If her well, mother we've lost there. we've lost some really qualified people in the past because they moved out of the county or they yeah. weren't county residents to start with. Yeah. No. I mean, we, we know that fear. Well, we'll see if Kevin can do anything. Hmm. Probably not, but we might as well give it the old college try. Fully, fully understand. Well, congratulations. I don't know if this qu question, Barbara, did, do you know at this point what that will do to the quorum? We're still well above the quorum. Because we still have enough, even with one absent or one because, no, because vacancy? The, the bill passed that we only need the number we have. So we can have a number missing. And how, how many members are there now that they've reduced the number from 15? Is it nine? It's nine, right, Kevin? Yes, that's correct, nine. And quorum and is five. The quorum's five, okay, thank you. You're welcome. And you know, with the council now being much more progressive and environmentally concerned, my guess is they will push or could push if we do need to fill this slot to uh, get it filled too, which would be good. Um, okay, let's see. Um, maybe we should, yeah, we're a third of the way through the meeting already. Um, let me flip the order that uh, Kevin has up here and that we first address this question of the Office of Law because at last month's meeting, someone raised the fear that maybe we could only have two members on any committee or and or committee meetings, any committee get together would have to be pre-announced by two weeks or whatever on the uh, uh, county SWAC website for the open meetings laws, regulations. And so Kevin was, because, but both of which would probably be very inhibitory to meet to um, committees working. So Kevin was going to check with the Office of Law and what did you learn? Okay, uh, so I made an inquiry with the Office of Law and I'm just gonna flash my screen to just sort of show you the summary of their uh, feedback to us. So they reviewed the bylaws and they said that in terms of the number of committees to be formed, uh, ad hoc um, specifically, there's no limit to the number of ad hoc committees to be formed because it's need-based, right? And also it's on top of the, the committees that's indicated in the bylaws. So no limit to the number of ad hoc committees. Number two, um, uh, your question about the Open Meetings Act, um, they said that subcommittees are exempted from the OMA, as long as the sub as the subcommittee is not made of a quorum of the commission, which means uh, 
the composition of the subcommittee must be less than four members. Why would this have to be less than four? The quorum is five. Why wouldn't four be okay? Because when it reaches five, then... Um, but, but you say it has to be less than four. So you're saying it has to be one, two, or three. Four, Why yes. Be four? Mm -hmm. Right, yes. I mean, since four is still less than five. Why couldn't That's it correct. So our quorum is five, right? Swak's quorum is five. So it has to be less than less than five. Okay. But four is okay. Yes. Uh -huh. So the subcommittee is exempted from uh, doing their work publicly. Um, but then, as, as they mentioned, when it reaches the number of five, then you have to make the meeting public. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the third point that they... They, they raise is that the subcommittee should not be used as a way to perform the commission's function behind closed doors. So um, in short, um, um, it has to be the, the function of the committee that, you know, that's assigned to the committee. And if, if the committee is doing the function of the commission, then it's, it's a violation of the, the bylaw. Um, and in that case, again, the, the meeting has to be made public. How do you distinguish what is doing the commission's function versus what is doing the committee's function? One is the the number of the number of um, members. Um, 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 no, no, but if we meet points one and two. But for points number three specifically. So I think they're just saying that the committee should not, you know, perform the function of the, the whole commission. Um, that's how I interpret the their statement. Um, um, because it's in violation of the bylaws. Barbara? Please. <clears throat> Reading that, I would think what they mean is uh, a subcommittee would be able to function and work on a particular issue, but before anything was, um, um, before the commission was to make some kind of a recommendation or whatever, um, whatever the committee is uh, studying or working on would have to come to the full committee, full commission. Surely. It seems like that's how it should work. Yeah. Yeah, they can't decide arbitrarily. They're they're not a quorum, so they no way they could decide. They can only make a recommendation to the whole SWAC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, if that's what it is, that's hopeful. Okay, let's let's hope that's it is. So based on your number, one to two members will constitute each committee, right, Barbara? Uh, no, one, two, three, or four. One, two, one, two three, or four, yes. Because uh -huh. I think with some of the committees, we had actually four people interested in being on them, as I remember. Okay. Um, although maybe with Alexandra leaving, I can't remember if she was on one of the ones that had the four, but whatever. Okay, good. Um, so, and, and just a final um, diddly thing here. Is it called a committee or a subcommittee? Because this is slightly, you know, you have no limit on the number of committees and then subcommittees are exempt. Are, are we, I, I, I don't know, just we should, we should pick some terminology and stick with it. Yeah, I, I, can, I can clarify with the Office of Law, but they use the word subcommittee. So I think that's the right word, but I, I, I will clarify with them. So what is the committee that, so the, the SWAC, they're considering a committee? Yeah, I'm the committee of the whole, Barbara, which would be all the members of the SWAC. So maybe they're considering because it's not everybody as the committee of the whole and their subcommittees. Okay. The council operates under committee of the whole or subcommittee. But I've never heard the county council and district council. 
Right, but I've never heard that. Maybe that's where they're picking it up from. I don't know. I'm not sure it makes a whole lot of difference. Yeah, we just might as well get our terminology straight if we're going to. Hello, this is Jonathan. I believe it could be considered a hard hoc uh, committee. A what? Based on hard hoc committee. Hard hoc? Yeah. Ad hoc? Yes. Because it's not a committee as a whole. So it's not the whole, the whole member of, of the commission are part of the committee. So it's hard hoc, hard hoc committee. Okay. That is my understanding based on what uh, uh, was just read. Yeah, I mean, they call it ad hoc committees, but then in the next line, they call it subcommittees. It's just confusing, at least to me. It's, it's the same thing to me. Okay, maybe if you can clarify with whoever is the powers that be, Kevin, if it is the same thing, it would be- Yeah, I agree. Uh -huh. Great. Okay, terrific. Okay, um, so Kevin sent around, or I sent around, somebody sent around, uh, who the people who had last month expressed interest in various committees and what we were thinking of for committees. Um, did every, do, do you have that there to put up, Kevin? Uh, hold on. Um, we can see if people still agree with that. Hold on. Um... I can look when I sent it. Give me one second. Okay, I sent it on uh, yesterday at 11.16 in the morning. I just copied and pasted this. Uh, oh, your sweetheart. Yeah, I read it and I am in agreement with the committee formed. Oh, I'm sorry. Give me one second. Okay, assuming that Alexandra cannot stay on, which I suspect, unfortunately, is pretty likely, do we have anybody else who's interested in being on the legislative? Because a committee of one is not so good. If not, I'm happy to be on that one also. Okay. So addressing point number three of the agenda, which is initial reports from the committee. Sorry. Um, obviously we don't have any because we didn't know if they could be or what size or anything. So nothing happened. Um, so now maybe we should use the last uh, half hour to talk about suggestions uh, related to the um, 10 year solid waste plan. Um, Barbara, before you do the discussion, can I just share the timeline for the 10 year? Please, yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Precisely that, if you could do that before. Okay, so the next iteration of the 10 year plan is uh, from next year. Um, we have submitted our progress report to MD last October 27. And 
the next step is for the drafting of the next 10 year plan, which we will submit to MDA by June 1 next year. This means that from starting from January to June, we will compile, we will start the drafting of the document. And that means um, we will include your suggestions uh, for the action plan and submit to MD by June 1, June 1st. So they require that before the council up and the county executive office approve the document, they have to see it first, uh, which means that from June to December, that's the time when the 10-year plan will be tackled by the county council for approval. So your inputs will be needed uh, next year, the first two quarters of the year. Um, so we can include it in the draft that's going to, sub to be submitted to MD. Okay, great. And so, so you guys haven't started on it yet? We haven't, yes. Okay. Kevin, do I understand from previous conversations and statements uh, that this committee won't necessarily see it until it's in pretty final draft stage, that we won't have an opportunity to come in as it's in drafting stages. Is that true? We won't get to see it until it goes public for public comment. That's I have to ask. Um, because I thought that's what somebody said in a previous meeting that- Marilyn had said that once. Yeah, that's what I thought. And, and, and that's kind of, you know, it, it seems to defeat the whole purpose of the commission if we're gonna have to wait until we get to the stage that it's almost ready to go to the council. Uh, I would hope that we could have an early input uh, in early drafts so that, you know, we've, we've already got a list of items that we'd like to see in it. But we'd also, I think, like the opportunity to see what is being proposed by, by the professional staff to see if mm -hmm. there's anything there that the commission has concerns about or that isn't being addressed that the, th the commission thinks needs to be addressed. So the last time we made the update to the tenure plan, um, I knew that before we before we submitted it to the council, we provided copies to the local governments, to the municipalities, to park and planning, to the different stakeholders for comments for comments. So I think you will be able to see the document. Um, that's at the comment stage. That's after the it's pretty finalized. And unless there's significant comments, were there were there any changes made based on comments you received? Any substantive changes? Yes, from for example, comments from the from Martha Ainsworth group, we made some significant uh, revisions uh, because the county council um, required us to to take note of the comments of uh, Martha's group. So yes, we did. And and I will I I will ask again Chuck with Marlene on, on, okay, on and, the question. And you, you already you already have the list of specific items that the commission has suggested we'd like to see addressed or modified in the existing plan. Can you make sure that they go forward to whoever's drafting the, the updated document? Yes. In fact, I, I I will be I would I would be part of the group which will draft the ten year plan. So thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who else is on the group? Uh, Marlin, Tim, RRD, RRD people. Oh, Marilyn and Tim. So people who actually hear the comments that we make here mm -hmm. in the Slack meeting. Yes. Okay, cool. And when does this go out for public? Because you have a public. Yes, so it's between June and December. The public one is the... That's correct, yes. Okay. Because the first six months next year will be the drafting of the document. Yeah, and that, that's where I'd like to see some of our early comments that we've already listed included in that early draft before we get to the comment stage where we go to go back and re-raise the issue. Hopefully they'll be addressed before that stage. That's why we're providing them. I understand. I just want to make sure that Kevin understands and the staff understands 
So these are issues we've already identified that we'd like to see addressed in the updated plan. So MDE and the public are gonna be reviewing this thing at the same time for finalization, correct? So MDE first, because uh, they, they have to see- Well, the they're, they're getting it June 1st, right? They're getting it June 1st. So if the public is gonna start June 1st through December, it's the same time. Or, or is, is it that the public isn't gonna see it until after MDE has blessed it for whatever they have to do, and then it'll be allowed to be released to the public for their comment, which is how does that correspond to what the county council is going to do? Is the county council going to look at it before it goes to the public or after it goes to the public? Or at the same time, for because the public will have two shots at it. So MDE has to see the document first. They're not going to um, provide some inputs, you know, the content itself, but what they will check is, you know, in terms of the sufficiency of the document as far as their outline is concerned. And then once they, they have done that, they will submit it back to us. And then that's the time that um, the public and the council can take a look at the document. So MDE gets it then in June. Yes. Back in July or August or whatever, and so it's after that that it goes to the council. Mm -hmm. Usually, two to three weeks. They 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 do a review of the document, uh, two to three weeks, and then the document is uh, returned to us, um, and then yeah, uh, goes to the council, and then the public comments, and then the approval uh, step. Okay. And we're, we're included in that public comment period, I believe. I think that's yes. how it worked in the past. We, we couldn't suggest anything prior to that public comment period. And, and that's my concern. By that time, it's, it's pretty well set in stone. I mean, there may be changes made, but they aren't that significant or substantial. But Kevin, were you saying that if it's you and Marilyn and Tim who are drafting it, and you have heard us haranguing about various topics, you will at least know that that is a concern we would love. Yes, to. Uh -huh. yes. I, I will convey your concern to to them, to Marley and Tim. Um, make sure that your inputs are um, included. Great. Okay, and Bill this evening submitted a bunch of uh, really good additional comments in addition to what we had talked about before. Um, Bill, would you like to- That was only for chapter five now, you know? Right. I looked at chapter, I looked at the earlier chapters and saw some of the things that I would assume were changed. Now that Kevin said that they haven't done any, haven't done anything, well then I don't really have a problem with the fact that those changes are, or those items are still in chapters one through four because no one's looked at chapters one through four. Right, yeah, no one's looked at anything, I think, since three right. years. Right. But, and it, okay. yeah, and I, I agree with Bill. The chapters one through four, there are a jillion points that when one reads it, you say, this has to be up to so, so it's only going to be you, Kevin, Marilyn, and Tim that are going to be looking at chapters one through four. Is there another group of people who are doing something similar to what we've done or for chapter five so, that are going to be doing it through one to four? Or no one cares. And so the group matter. also includes um, recycling section, um, uh, the recycling manager, landfill manager. Okay. So usually it's the, the managers of RRD uh, division who take a look at the document, all the managers. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. okay. That's fine. So Barbara, my suggestion is... Um, because there's a committee to task to do the review, right? Um, uh, the the ten-year plan. If the if the committee can consolidate all the comments, and then present to the body and then submit to us, if that's possible. Okay. Thank you. All from name. Sorry, this stupid thing. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. We will do that. And if anyone else has additional <clears throat> comments, please get them in. Let's see. Who was on? Uh, where did I get that? Who was on that committee again? That was legislative. Was Chuck and Alexandria? Uh, but also the future solid waste initiatives was apparently where the ten years. Oh, that's that the one I was looking at. Okay. So that was Mohammed and Chuck and me also. Okay. And Bill, wouldn't you like to be on that too? Why? Is I gave you my comments. You can do with them as you please. We love them. Well, like I say, there's I don't have much more to contribute. I gave you what I have. No, you you because we can also make comments on chapters one through four. And if you have comments a quarter as good on chapters one through four as on chapter five, those would be very valuable too. Well, I don't I, yeah, but if if they haven't written chapters one through four, there's not a whole lot of necessity for comments until you see what they're gonna write to me. How, you know? So Kevin, let's ask on that. How much changed updated whatever will chapters one through four be i mean will they just no. were you thinking of pretty much just taking the previous one and doing occasional edits or doing a real real rewrite it's not a you know total rewriting of the document we take off from the previous document so if there are things that need to remain then we will you know we will have those uh, information um, as is, but if there are updates, if there are new, uh, you know, programs or services, then we we update the the document. Um, but we're not entirely starting from scratch. We have the oh, no, previous sure. document. Yep. Of course not. No. Okay, but it's going to be here. So, what uh, are the things that were being talked about that would be wonderful to do, but aren't at the really flushed out and approved initiative stage. Like for instance, the idea of the reuse facility or the idea of a North County um, uh, 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 composting facility where Andrea Crooms had said that if Dave's group can come up with plans for it, that she could come up with land. Is that still on the table? And should that be in the document? I guess those are two different questions. Yeah, we you can uh, you can uh, raise that uh, suggestion again. Uh, reiterate that suggestion, um, and then um, RRD can discuss that further. Dave, do you want to have any comment on that? I do have a comment or question for you, Kevin, and it's somewhat of a loaded question, but I'll ask it anyway. Okay, you, Marilyn, and Tim are going to be working as the core for the rewrite of the document. You're going to get input from some of the other um, division branch chiefs, whatever, for their sections or that. At yes. what point does somebody from the, since the county exec seems to be riding herd on all the messaging that's coming up, at what point do they get involved in it? Or they've already talked to you guys so that what you're putting in there is what they've already told you can be in there? Or is it something that they're going to get another shot at it and who knows what the hell they'll do it? So the first step with the updating is we get information from the different agencies, from the different divisions, from the county executive office on the messaging. And then we update the document. And okay, then so you, we present okay. to them. Um, um, I think um, after MDE has seen the document, um, but it's but from January to June, um, it's the time when Andrea uh, takes a look at the document as well. Um, make sure that before it goes to the to MDE, Andrea, Andrea sees the whole document, the draft document. Uh, because he rep she represents the council, the county executive office, right? And then okay. I think she 
provides feedback to the county executive on the on the report on the document. Um, I think that's that's you've answered my question. Yeah, that's fine. I'm yeah. good. I understand. I just was curious as where what their role was going to be on this, since they seem to be the messaging central that this is part of a message as I see it, particularly since it's getting state visibility, um, that they would want to have some control over it as well. And so, I just want to know where they were starting their control point from. You've answered it. Okay. Not really, because well, Bill, I think you bring up a very good point because whenever we have said anything about messaging specifically in this meeting, to Andrea and how we'd like to be involved or how we feel that they should have mentioned the word um, uh, uh, methane somewhere when they were trying to encourage the residents to do composting. She always says it's completely out of her hands. It's it's at the county, county execs uh, leadership and she has nothing to do with the messaging. So it seems like we're getting two different you know, a PR side and the actual how it really works side. Welcome to politics. Yeah. Okay. But I think um, what we will emphasize in this uh, upcoming updating of the report, of the document is that uh, in terms of the messaging, I think it, we will we will reflect that you know it's led by the county executive um, in tandem with the department with the environment. You know, uh, something would, to that. If there's any way to get in there, that since the SWAC, I believe, is at least according to the official. Um, mandating letter literature uh, legislation um working in to report to the county executive working for and to report to the county executive if asking if the SWAC could in the future be part of the messaging because Again, there have been a jillion messages about the composting. There was finally one that I think gave the word like helping the environment or maybe even climate change. But I mean, again, the word methane has never been used, close as I can tell, in talking with the public. And Barbara, I know I know you've raised this issue about messaging almost every meeting for the last yeah. since we were created. Broken record, got it. And, and I don't know, you know, who's supposed to carry the message to the county executive. I thought the department head had at one time said, "Yes, yeah, she took the message, and we got an answer back. We couldn't be involved." I don't know how much more you're going to be able to beat this animal to death. I think yeah, you, right. you've tried repeatedly possible through the new council and mm -hmm. uh certainly in the swear again well if if mm -hmm. if the uh, council has any sway but this appears to be a county executive issue not a council issue i well, could be wrong in the, in the in the uh, passing of the gavel ceremony uh andrea uh, uh angela also brooks talk was very conciliatory to the new council and how effectively I thought she was saying she's going to change in part course of how she's handling things. She may be forced to change it because there's a new majority yeah. that has different ideas. Exactly. But she gave the impression that she's happy to do this. Um, and it's not that it's being rammed down her throat. So it's possible that this is a not bad time to try to encourage such things. Barbara, if it makes you happy, I just got my new compost bin Saturday, and in it there was some literature. And one of the frequently asked questions, the first frequently asked question has says point number two, which are the benefits to doing curbside collection, is to reduce methane greenhouse gas emissions. So, Ooh, cool. Thanks. Cool. 
Oh, can, right up there, right, whoop, right over there. Can you can you yeah. send that to us? I got, I got it in hard copy. I could scan it in, but it's yeah. in, I can't sure. do it now. Sure. Oh no, no, no. But leisurely. Oh, that would be great. Well, I mean, it would be wonderful though if that was. Well, I guess everybody is now getting the bins. So. Yeah, everybody's getting a bin. So it went, you yeah, know. So this is the right time to do it then. Okay. Okay. And it's been done. It was done. They good. did it. Terrific. They did it. Terrific. So maybe our screaming did some good. Maybe our being a broken record every month, actually. No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your vote of confidence. Well, I'm just saying. I think they Barbara, had Barbara, Barbara, we're not gonna we're not gonna give you that credit, Barbara. <laughs> I can tell that. <laughs> okay. Found the link in um the website listings so i just sent it in the chat the faq for the compost the accounting oh okay so then i don't have to scan it great you wanted a copy miss barbara so i'm sorry it's where it's in the chat it's available publicly i just copied it so oh. you can see it so that you know. thank you i appreciate that let me copy this out before we end our meeting and the whole thing dies. Great. Oh. Rats, wait a sec. Oh. Control C. Oh, you can't copy from chats, at least on Macs. Oh, just copy this. Up. No, okay. Now, can, can you uh, email it to me because my Mac won't let me copy, and by the time I write everything out and type it in, I'm going to have errors. Okay, I'll see Barbara, that. you you. You can print it and scan it. Right, and then, and then type it in again. But if it's you don't have to print it again, no. you can print. You can print the chat from from uh, the chat. You can print it, and then you can scan what was printed. My computer does not have the software to turn a scan into text. Can you screenshot? Is it or um, in Zoom? Can you download the chat? Yeah. Or I to be able to do that. No, I can do a screenshot of it, but again, I have to type it in. I, I have no Kevin, way. Can, Kevin, can you scan it and then send it back to its text? Um, uh, yeah, I think I can, yes. There you go, Barbara. Super. Thank you guys so much. So I'm hopefully getting a new computer soon, so maybe that will allow me to do it, but I don't know. I can't at any rate. Um, you may need to look at your printer as well, because scanning is really a printing function, not a not a computer function. But I'm I'm right. happy to to just put it into a, in don't as worry. you know text, not as printing it out. I don't need a printer in order for my. No, the, the scanning is usually done from the printer. Yeah, scan to to convert it from a PDF or from a hard copy back and put it back into a text. You usually have to scan it. And that's a printer function. I see what you're it won't saying. matter if you upgrade your computer. Yeah, no. Right. I mean, again, it's a shame to have to throw out a perfectly good printer if it doesn't do it. So, well, whatever. <clears throat> Might want to update your drivers for your printer. Okay, we just done last month, but yes. No. Oh. Well, so that's as long as it's a printer scanner. If it's just a printer, well, it's never going to scan. So, you know. Yeah, no, it's a it's a printer scanner, and it was I thought it was a could do it. If it's Whatever. a printer scanner, if you go online with the model of your printer scanner and download the software, that's probably what you need. That's what was done last month. Yeah, that was the, then you should be able to scan it in. Right. Okay. What, 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 maybe, you, can maybe save, you can save it as you can save it as a PDF, or you can save it as a JPEG. Maybe, maybe we can talk, maybe we can talk, Chuck, or maybe it's something that doesn't work on Macs. Do you have a Mac or a PC? I don't have a Mac. 
Yeah, because maybe I know it, I know it works. Issue. Maybe know it's it, maybe it's a Mac issue. Yeah, I know it works on PCs and the, yeah. Okay, of, all right. Uh, your office thought that it didn't work on Macs, but you know, there they might be wrong. They're just the Hopkins IT guys. So whatever. Okay, sorry. All complicated. I, I hate all this IT stuff. Hmm. Um. Okay, and I guess we are unfortunately at six fifty eight already. Barbara, I have one um, uh, Please. Uh, request to make. Um, could your group make a deadline for the consolidated comments for the 10-year plan? Um, so we can, you know, because we, we will start doing the drafting uh, from Kevin, January. from my perspective, you have all the comments that I'd care to make at this point until we see a further draft. Okay, okay. so... Um, yeah, so all what happened? Uh, Bill just uh, provided more, and um, uh, I, I'd like to add a, a few to those also. And then maybe like between Christmas and New Year's, the uh, committee can uh, correspond and get them all into a consolidated form to have okay. by January 1st to Kevin. Okay, thank you. Would that work, guys? Don't talk to me, so sure. Okay, so if anybody else has other comments on the uh, uh, solid waste plan, um, both on the future, on the chapter five, assuming the layout stays the same as the future things, and if there's anything else they want to be sure that the county includes in chapters one through four that aren't there now, but mm -hmm. seems obvious should be there, but they would just like to put their thumbprint on getting them there. Those would be great to put in also. Let's now do around the room asking if people have comments that we haven't addressed yet. Kevin? Uh, I have no further um, comments or questions, Barbara. Thank you. Alexandra? Um, I just wanted to say also, I agree. Um, I second with what Chuck was saying that, um, that my recommendation is that the committee move to um, uh, find a, a replacement so that the group um, can remain uh, sustainable, uh, especially if the likelihood of uh, my being able to participate is is, is not likely. Um, so I, I, I second Chuck's thoughts on that. Well, hopefully they will get a response on the legality of me staying pretty quickly. And you know, we don't find somebody. I mean, it's Barbara, like, Barbara, let me ask you a specific question. Has Alexandria submitted a letter of resignation based on the fact that she's moved? Yeah. Is that is that something that I that I need to do? That's something I, you, you need to advise the county that you are no longer a Prince George's County resident, and therefore, regretfully, you need to resign so that they have it officially in the record. I mean, the fact that you've made the statement on the record here sure. uh, serves the committee purposes, but that doesn't give the notice to the county executive. Well, before she, officer. before she submits that letter and resigns, let's have Kevin check if she absolutely needs to. I think the law is very clear, Barbara. Mm -hmm. The law specifically says people on commissions and boards need to be county residents. That's why we've had a problem in the past getting people to serve. Okay, you wouldn't be willing to let Kevin check and see if- I have no problem with Kevin checking again if Kevin wants to do that, but I don't want to spend government time and energy for something that's beta complete. Kevin, do you know from your knowledge what the law requires? Uh, I don't have any, you know, um, um, idea about, about, you know. All right, if, Barbara, so, if you want to have him check, that's fine. But, but I can check tomorrow. I can check tomorrow and I'll Thank provide you. it. We have a, my understanding is you have to be a county resident. 
because uh, at the initial stage during the beginning of the year, one of the commissioners did not continue because she moved to Charles County. Correct. You have to be Prince George's County resident to stay in the, uh, the as a commissioner. That is my understanding. That's my understanding of the law too. Yeah. I think yeah. it's everybody's understanding, but it's still worth if you can just <laughs> check it. Then we know we've crossed every I, dotted every T, whatever it is, other way around, but you know what I mean. Okay. Yeah, I'll ask tomorrow, right away. Yeah. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Bill, any other comments? No. Chuck, other comments? Happy holidays. <laughs> You and everyone. Tyla, we've hardly heard from you. Other comments? Nothing other than the fact that I'll just email the two comments I have about the solid waste plan. But yeah, happy holidays, Merry Christmas. If any of you celebrate, uh, yeah. Super. Okay, you've you've emailed them to me. Yeah, I'll email them to you. Yeah, it, it'll be on the chain. The the one that was emailed today. So you'll okay. see it in the FAQ link. Yeah. The FAQ link. So in, you, it's an email or it's in a. Yeah, I'm email. I'm emailing my comments and the if the link the com, uh, compost FAQ that's in the chat. If that's trouble, I'll just email it to you so you have it. Oh, okay. Great. Okay, so you're emailing it. Terrific. Thank you so much. Mohammed. Hmm. Hmm. Alien. Do you sound like Daffy Duck? <laughs> huh. so unfortunately, the audio was all screwed up. If you have any comments, would you? Uh, could we trouble you, Mohammed, to uh, put them into the chat? Because unfortunately, we can't hear you. Uh, Dave. Uh, no comments. Other than happy holidays to everybody. And Jonathan. No additional comments. Happy holiday to everybody. Okay. And Nancy, are you able to talk, assuming it is Nancy on 866, or are you like driving and you're, if you don't talk, I assume it is that you are like driving and can't. Sounds like it. She's still muted, so. Yeah, she said she's unable to unmute. Oh, she did, okay. She's unable to uh, unmute. Okay. Okay. Well, in that case, everybody have a wonderful holidays. And we look forward to see everybody reinvigorated in uh, early 2023. And if anybody has more comments for the 10 year solid waste. And I think hearing now who was on the committee to write it and the time frame means that the comments we put in, if they are succinct and uh, well thought out, should hopefully have some sway in the actual writing of the process, not the document. So that's terrific. So happy holidays, everyone. OK. Happy holidays. Bye. Thank you. I know. Mm -hmm.